Power 1051 is the Breakfast Club. Good morning. We got a special guest in the building. Ben Baller. Ben Baller. Jeweler to the sir? stars. Man, I'm just, you know. Are you wearing a world star hip hop chain? Uh, I made all his chains, yeah. So you he did? Just, so he gave me um, wow. an honorary chain being like a team member. How much did you charge him for that? Q from World Star? For, uh, he made big chains, though. Okay. Now he told me, because I just saw him yesterday, he said all his chains are fake. <laughs> You're crazy. No, he said kidding. they're hollow. No, he did say that. <laughs> they, don't even say that. they don't even go off when he goes to the metal detector. Q is a, can, yeah, say whatever you want. Q is a crazy m Absolutely. Q, like, he... I seen Q drop half a million dollars, like, in a few months. Just, Absolutely. And not even really looking at the bill. So I said, yo, the site got to be making money because he's not stupid because he has accountants and everything. And right, right. He got them Other than that, he's going to jail sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One of the but, you know, yeah, he's all legit and everything else. But, no, Q's definitely spent a lot of money. You don't know that for sure. Don't co-sign that. Nah, yeah. Yeah. You don't know if he's legit or not. <laughs> now, Ben, how did you get into doing jewelry? Because you were in the music industry at first. I was in the music business. Mm -hmm. Doing what? Um, I was a VP and r at Priority okay. Records. Gotcha. This is when they had... Pac? Uh, no, we had, uh, well, we had West Side Connection. Mm -hmm. I had Master P. Mm -hmm. I had just signed Jay-Z, Reasonable Doubt. Mm -hmm. um, Is that when Wu-Tang Records had a deal over at Priority also? But yeah, it was a really small deal. Right, it's I remember crazy that. Small. That sounds Sons. like a great era. So you sir. signed Jay-Z's deal? Well, it was like five of us. Oh, right. It was a distributed label through um, Freeze. Okay. And through, uh, and um, it was just a crazy time over there. You know, I had, uh, we just started, um, I moved, I lived here actually, mm -hmm. and we had started up the East Coast Division. So we had um, Coco Brothers, which was Smith & Wesson. Right. Mm -hmm. We had um, Black Moon. We had Health to Skelter. Damn. OGC Click. Yeah, that's a great And then artist. we had uh, Organized Confusion. Oh, that was, a, that was a good time. Good era, yeah. It was definitely, definitely the golden era, you know. I was heavy in it. And then on the West Coast, uh, I had an artist named Razcast that was on my list. I remember so, Razcast. That's one of the best lyricists ever. Yeah. Well, to me, anyway. I think well, no, he, he, was, he was tight. He so. ended up going to jail or something, right? Oh, he was on the run or he something. He got beat up by the game. I don't know if he got beat up by the game, but and me and Game are real tight. I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> anyways, on to that. Don't mess um, with his money. Come on, Charlamagne. I actually got my job from uh, from I was DJing at a club and I met Dr. Dre and Sam Snead, mm -hmm. and uh, Dre gave me his contact. We became cool. He linked me up with the people that put him on because NWA was and all the whole that whole thing was basically, you know, founded over at Priority Records. They mm -hmm. were the pioneers of gangster rap, and then um, when he started up Black Market Records, he had hit me up and said, "Yo, you need to come with me over here." Mm -hmm stop playing games and I just signed a huge contract because you know we just did Reasonable Doubt and we're starting to push Master P is dropping a record every, every single week, week every yeah. week and then P was like yo I want you to introduce me to Pac and we would argue every single day and I'd be like you know seriously to tell you the truth I think you should probably kill yourself before 8pm because you're the worst rapper I've ever heard in my life but it was just funny because right. Past P was I couldn't get it how he was you know blown up so big you told Master P you was the worst rapper you've ever heard in your life in my office you Jesus. know but, but he was you know he was doing it and he always was so generous mm -hmm. and um at that moment, I got a text, and I just signed a contract, and I knew I didn't have enough money to where the CEO was going to sue me. Mm -hmm. Could have probably blackballed me, but Dre just offered, you know, offered me an opportunity. It was 11 people in, in, in the company, Black Market Records, and I was like, I got to go. So you went with Dre? So I went with Dre, started up Aftermath. We couldn't, we couldn't get Black Market. That first Aftermath was horrible. Nah, you know, nah, I'm gonna be honest. That first aftermath <laughs> compilation was actually a dope album. It was actually a good album. No, it I was with you, for the artists that we had. But the thing is, I had 18 artists on the label, including people like the Last Emperor. People didn't even know that we had all these artists signed right. on there. But he had so much drama, and and there was so much with Suge and everything else going on. So it was like he just was trying to figure things out. By the time he did with Eminem and everything, it was like. You know, but he takes his time and does his thing. I can't say anything about Dre because if it wasn't for his co-sign in the game, everyone else's co-sign was cool. Right. But his co-sign was like, he said a lot of motivation to me in life. Right. I never listened to any of it until <laughs> I had <laughs> up on everything. <laughs> Real he said, I so, better so, start listening so what Did you bet you bailed on Dre because you thought it wasn't gonna pop off? Um, yes. it wasn't that. No, it wasn't that. It was uh, I had an artist named King T at the time who was a legend. He was t from where I'm from, born mm -hmm. and raised in L.A. You know, and on some gang shit, on some L.A on everything he was a legend and we had an amazing album <clears throat> to this day I'll back it to you know mm -hmm. Hit Boy said it's one of his favorite albums ever it was called Thy Kingdom Come and I was the A&R and just things just weren't going the way and this is not derogatory towards Dre he just had so many artists right. nothing really came out so he put the Truths album out and it just nothing ever came out so I felt like stagnated it, it, it was it was Eminem was killing it and I understood he saved the label or maybe that's the wrong thing for me to say. Yeah, but that's said, no, he, so saved good. He, he saved the label. Yes, he did. Okay. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to be politically that's correct. All right, that's all right. good. So basically from there, I was like, you know, I'm a DJ, and me and my man had started up a crew, rest in peace, DJ Am, 
And uh, we started up a little crew. We was DJing in the clubs, and I was making some money. And uh, Jay was like, all right, well, you know, no disrespect, cool. Here's your, here's your severance check. Out of here, here's your severance check, all right. And so I left, and then I came back because I had an artist named Hitman mm -hmm. who had wrote 80% of the 2001 record. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right, let's get this going. And the Hitman album never came out. So I was like, you know what, man? Really, to tell you the truth, just the way the business is and I'm how things are. I'm done with the music Yeah, I'm going to jury. How did you get into jury? Like, what made you Let's do, do this. this? Are you and Dre still cool now? Yeah, yeah for okay. sure. So Dre's, you wear, you, you own a pair of Beats by Dre headphones? Oh, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Okay. Uh, shout yeah. out to Karen Civil. Um, <laughs> and Dre. <laughs> so, yeah, um, at that time, my cousin, he was like 21 years old, decided to take over my uncle's jewelry business. And he's like, hey, man, why don't you um, bring me like Bone Thugs or somebody? I'm like, Bone Thugs is ruthless, homie. I'm on Aftermath. Like, we don't even anyone at Easy's camp and that side, whatever, mm -hmm. um, whatever. He's like, bring me anybody. So I was like, all right. So I tried to make some aftermath chains and, you know, I wore some jewelry here and there. And uh, I didn't really want to do anything with that. So years later, you know, after doing DJing, being in the sneaker game, real heavy, mm -hmm. Nike, all that stuff, getting checks from them, I took like a year off and tried to figure out what I was going to do with my life. Because number one, I retired from DJing. I didn't want to do it anymore. Um, Hear that, Emmy? And, mm -hmm. uh, I didn't want to do the, the sneaker thing anymore. Mm -hmm. I just made about $1.6 million off of selling my sneakers on eBay, mm -hmm. and I set these records, and yeah. so I was like, I need to do something with this bread. So I traveled for a little bit, and I came back, and I said, I need to find a job. I need to figure out something to do. Hit my cousin up, and he's like, well, okay, well, and he was doing his thing. Like, he was actually really well known throughout all the hood, and I said, how do I get in with you, and let's do this on a 50-50 venture? And he's like, well, bring me somebody, and let's talk. So the first thing I brought him was Mariah Carey. My man was engaged to Mariah Carey back in the day. Who's your man? Mark Sudak. He just got married, by the way, this weekend. Okay. To David Kat, uh, D uh, Jeffrey Katzenberg's daughter. Oh, I, I thought you were going to say got married to a guy. I was going to say, no, all right. No, no, Damn no, it, man. Jeffrey I was going to say, Mariah Carey's box must be terrible. She <laughs> drove a man to a man? Damn. <laughs> Sorry, Nick. No. I'm just saying. So, you know, she, she, bought a, she bought a real heavy icy chain, and she liked it, and, and I think she wore it twice. Mm -hmm. And then after David that... Cameron. Yeah. And then after that... Yeah. Um, I did a couple cats from <laughs> stupid. Was working with BMF a little bit, and then I was oh. working with um. Then I was working. <laughs> <laughs> then I was working with the Clips, mm -hmm. and I made um. There was a cat that was managing them at the time named Jeezy, mm -hmm. and I was doing stuff with him, and I started doing things with um with Malice, and then I built a relationship. Then from there, it just started to snowball, and then Jacob went to jail. When Jacob went to jail, I said, "Yo, I really don't have that much time. I need to slide in here and get everyone I can before right. he gets back out." Yeah. In jail. So Storch, Fat Joe, um can't think i mean everyone he you know pretty much was like they, he was hot no one wanted to mess with him because they thought you know there was feds in front of his store and everything right. so i was like come with me so what did you do I, start giving artists discounts or just giving away free jewelry or? uh now nah, you know i got caught up in that thing early on people were like yo man i'm gonna give you promotion man blah blah whatever it's like if someone even came to me like i made michael jackson's jewelry you know what i'm saying stuff with barack obama like i don't need promotion from you no more like barack for, obama bought a chain nah, he's like some security wow. detail we made a little like uh, we did a little old lapels, you know what I'm saying? Like little. Gotcha. Anyways, um, well, Michael had iced out little boy. Shut up, man! <laughs> Come on, man! Um, <laughs> you stupid, yo! Michael bought uh, 25 uh, belt buckles, all about 40, 50 carats in each, and he bought a lot of brooches. He wore them on his "This Is It" um, rehearsals and stuff. But um, gotcha. that must be exciting to see your stuff like in on TV and on "This Is It" and nothing beats Michael Jackson though. Oh. Yeah, no, he's all time. I mean, you know him and and I mean. Rock's I, a big deal too. That's the happen. Yeah, Rock is big. The only thing is, I never, I didn't get to meet him. It was direct to through, you know, two other people. Gotcha. I knew it was legit, but it was like I couldn't really say. Like, I don't have any press pictures. Like, I have press pictures of Tom Cruise. You know, I have tons of Justin Bieber. He's one of my biggest clients. Do you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. Bieber and Floyd Mayweather's one of my best clients. And, you know, these people, like all of them, I've never been a starstruck type dude until um, me and Prince did business together. Like, kind of, I met Prince. You know what's funny? Prince um, almost turned him out. We met Prince I up believe here. that he though. Came up here, yeah. He made him, and he was stuttering, didn't know what to say. He was sweating. You, you please. Uh, you <laughs> the I mean, you said you said it. Prince is a very charming dude, though. It's <laughs> he's got an <laughs> air about him. We, said, we, have, real. we have 45 seconds. I can tell you, I done met Prince three times in the clubs. I was DJing this and that. This is after he turned out Tevin Campbell. All that crazy. Whoa, 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 whoa! whoa. <laughs> what do you mean Prince <laughs> turned out Tevin Campbell? Anyways, allegedly, so, wow. allegedly, my bad, allegedly. So, so yo, you telling me Prince Bang Tommy Campbell? I don't know, man. He just seemed real funny style. I remember because I was in the music business, and I remember going over to Warner Brothers <laughs> and seeing him, and then seeing him after all that. And lightened um, up his voice. I refuse to believe Prince is gay, though. Anyways, I don't know. Maybe that Bottom gay, line maybe is, bi, but go ahead. About four years ago, I was invited to his crib. You know, like you know, twenty-five million dollars crib. Basketball? 
doesn't play basketball. Did he cook your pancakes in the morning? They have breakfast being cooked at 4 in the morning in the house. Mm -hmm. So I go downstairs. It was a private concert. It was him performing for 15 people. What? And um, I don't get starstruck. Like I said, I met Michael Jackson. I've mm -hmm. met, name a celebrity, and I probably have met him. I mean, right. 90, 90, I'm talking white folks, black, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, huge, Korean artists, everything. So I go downstairs, and it's loud as hell. It's crazy. I'm in Prince's house. I want to make phone calls and call people. My boy's like, yo, I'm calling you for Prince's phone. So we go downstairs. He does his thing. He's on with um, Anthony Hamilton was playing some instrument or something. Christina Milian was there. My boy Hill Harper was there. It was a random eclectic crew right. and he's jamming and he's like cracking jokes and everything so you know whatever get a chance he walks away comes up and I'm like I, I don't even know how to say I don't want to say pause even because I'm a grown man I'm say, nah, you, ain't say, you ain't gotta say pause go ahead dude suck skin <laughs> dude skin was real you know he, I was like damn you know you, you get to a level of making so much money he um you know, he take care of himself. So his skin, face was flawless. I'm looking at a dude, just, you know, he had a deep voice, like, so you're a jeweler, you know, blah, blah. And he was like, yo, you know, what do you think about this? And he was like one of them Jesus like type of shit. Ben, shawl. don't say your dick got hard when, when Prince Hell came to no, you. Come All on, right, man, just make I'm sure. I'm you gotta sure. jump out the window. I'm one. married to a beautiful woman. <laughs> Anyways, not that I need to justify. So he kind of <laughs> opened up his little, like, Jesus, like, you know, he had like a G Jesus, like, he silk. He flashed you? Like, 17,000 silk Egyptian cotton. Right, right. No, but he opened it up and. He had a nineteen million dollar diamond wife beater wear, and it was it was my whole life. What's a wife beater? A wife beater what? diamond out? Okay, think of a wife beater, mm -hmm. not cut down all the way to the waist. Mm -hmm. And my light bow, you remember? Crop top. So he not crop top, kind of like on some Excalibur <laughs> like chainmail. It wasn't oh a bra. It was up to about over, just around the right at the belly button. Mm -hmm. That's and a you crop know, top. You have to understand. From here, here, right here, I can tell if your earrings are fake. I can mm -hmm. tell if you know whatever. I can see a diamond. I'm a jeweler, you right. know. So. I look and I'm tell like, him it's not fake because they'll run and say something later. But tell him, no, you good. Nah, you should take your shades off because they look a little cloudy. Shut the up, man. Is that high quality? <laughs> is that high quality? For my ass, I'm not gonna sit there and talk about it because I'm sure he's dealing with Avion or somebody or whatever out here. And, Go ahead. And, so, I look at the jewelry and in the centerpiece, he has like about a 19 karat stone. The rest Damn. of the the smallest stone was maybe a carat and a half, two carats, but they're averaging like three, four carats. And I'm like, even if these were some stones you know but we talk I mean I estimated it just a high estimate whatever but I mean at the, at the worst if you were to take it to a pawn shop probably about 13 million dollars just anyway. off, off the pawn and I just sat there and I didn't know what to say at that point his shirt like, glamoured you yeah he was like who made this he's like Lawrence Kraft and I was like of course he did I mean you know you're talking about the best and he, he was just talking about him playing shows with James Brown back in the day just a bunch of people and then at that point I was just I, like I said, I don't get starstruck, but he's talking about some of the greats and going, you know, to, to Saudi Arabia, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And playing for princes and stuff with Barry White and just random people and just, just crazy things, telling me stories about Bob, but just people like I've respected in the game. Prince is a legend, man. And, you know, and it's not, not gay sure. if it's Prince. Because if you look in Prince's eyes too long, he will glamour you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he'll glamour me. So That's, basically, okay. uh, I, I felt like at that point, I was going to keep it real with myself. I wasn't going to sit there and be like, All right, I'm going to go. Because in order for me to make something that costs $19 million with him... He's not dropping me a check for usually, you know, you gotta give me sixty percent down. It's not it wasn't just gonna happen. So I wasn't about to put up, you know, say he wanted to make a ring or something. I'm not gonna put up two million of my own money mm -hmm. so that, you know, right. I can do on a chance. Right. It was just, you know, I am more about a sure thing and I know when to gamble, when to not to gamble. But, you know, we started around two thousand five, two thousand six, and it's just been unbelievable. I don't, I don't know what to say, you know, for yeah. for the last it, seven years. Well, even after the recession and stuff, these rappers are still buying jewelry? Well, this is the reason um, what, what I'm getting to right now is I started making a lot more. Uh, what happened was I went a different direction and then most jewelers went another direction. You know, you never speak derogatory about another jeweler in your trade. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't talk about bad at the DJs. I know rappers beef and everything. I've been in this game a minute, but a lot of jewelers come at me because, you know, whatever. I don't really like acknowledge them. And I played mm -hmm. I played a real corny role and be like, I never heard of you before in my life because mm -hmm. it's just easier that way. Mm -hmm. And they could get offended and they get over it. Instead of saying, yo, man, you know what? You Houston rock uh, jewelers are terrible. But what happened was the trend was all these jewelers are going and making alloy pieces, making them heavy, and then dipping them in gold. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? And then they're putting in, you know, colored cubic zirconias and different <laughs> things and colorful things. And it just, it, it put a bad taste in my mouth. But how are you supposed to know? Like, how do you know? The average person. Well, I mean, it just depends. Sometimes you see something and I'm just like... Average person. Cool. Like how would the average yeah. person know? Like, how do we know somebody's a credible jeweler? A credible jeweler? Yeah, like, how do you know? You know, if they can I mean, sell you, you anything. There's I mean, no way of knowing it. You got to get your stuff checked out. Yeah. I mean, I got, got my first chain. 
I mean, um, even Jacob got busted. You know, he was he was he was selling fake, you know, engagement rings to Nas and, definitely and whatever. Got me. But I mean, these are all That's rumors. Why I they Nas, say she had a fake engagement ring. No, <laughs> no, he he got he got a uh, something happened with that with the engagement ring the first time around with Kalix. But um, Nas, one of my clients, but um, you know what what they went to is they went to that and I said, you know what, I need to figure something out because it is real bad. Like 2009 was the worst year of my life. I couldn't believe it. Like we were just, it was really, you know, and then I just started making smaller pieces. Like this is on a bigger side. Mm -hmm. And I just started making more subtle pieces. And you know, people aren't wearing gigantic chains anymore. I did this video as a joke with Wale called Beautiful Girl. So I put a bunch of jewelry on him because he was like trying to represent Gucci Mane and I everything. Remember, yeah. but, you know, but no one's wearing that. So, you know, I just started making smaller, classier pieces and they start flying. And um, at the time, I was doing this project with Kanye West to make these plastic Jesus pieces. We only made a few, and you see, like, he was wearing them, Amber Rose was wearing them. There was, like, a plastic piece. Mm -hmm. It was plastic, and um, we were going to do it for his company, Pastel. And uh, I, it, like, hit, a, like, a light bulb went off. And I was like, damn, you know, if Kanye had even 40% of those stunner shades, I mean, the, the shutter shades, he'd, be, he'd have been almost, you know, half a billion dollars just off that. They're, they're at the beach. Mm -hmm. You know, they're at the malls, kiosks. So I said, let's produce... 100,000 of these at a certain pop and he wanted to sell them for $600. Now mind you, you know I'm not making these for anywhere near that so we're right. going to kill it. And then Pastel folded so Man. I figured, Damn. you know, Goodwood started doing it and no no disrespect to Goodwood because, you know, um, Terry and all that, they're all my people's Chris but uh, I said I need to start making something more affordable. Right. So I just started making, you know, I had the perfect Jesus mold and I sell a lot of Jesus pieces to a lot of different people. So I started making smaller versions that girls, guys could wear everything else between that 2000 to 5000 range instead of that 12000 to 20000 range. Now, people are starting to, some people don't get it, but like even someone like Fab or someone else, they'll be like, no, I understand. You know, they want to wear something a little more subtle, a little more, you mm -hmm. know, muted Not and so clean. Not so gaudy. Mm -hmm. Not so gaudy. So basically, that saved me and then that turned into everything else. And then at that time, um, I got approached by a, a major, net, you know, a, a network to do a reality show. And what's this reality show about? Insane Bling. No, no, no. This is this is um this was the original Ben Baller series. I was on Fuse Television Network, mm -hmm. and uh, Original Media was the producers. Um, they did Rachel Zoe Project, Miami Inc., LA Inc., all that. And so basically from there, uh, my manager hit me up, said, "Yo, man, we got some major cats. Let's do this bang." So we shot a uh, a pilot, and um, we got greenlit for an episode. Mm -hmm. And Fuse went bankrupt. <laughs> Damn it, man. Everything. It's one thing Damn, to have... You got bad luck, man. I know, right? I just got, got ups and yeah, downs. You know what? No, really, for real. It's been, I got to do business with him. He touched you and you go bankrupt. It's been, it's been <laughs> ups and downs. And so they greenlit the, the series. They fired everybody. They didn't just fire like the mail room and like the, they fired the CEO, president, all the way down. Damn it, man. You just got the worst. So now what's, so, you got a new reality show now, But right? it's a, yeah, a yeah. web series. Yeah, you it's, got a new reality show now. So basically from there... Uh, we bought the footage. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Oh, we had the footage. Fabulous was on my first episode. Mm -hmm. And we made a beautiful sizzle reel. So we went out, started shopping a little bit. But I was, you know, I was in the game. I was a person giving deals out of record labels. In Hollywood, it's totally different. So, But it's the same. I understand when people give me the, the you know, the, the Ari Gold lines. Mm -hmm. So basically, um, we locked down a deal with Electus. And Ben Silverman, you know, he's huge. Created the, he's the founder of the Office, produ you know, executive producer of that. The biggest Loser, big mm -hmm. shows, VH1, Mob Wives. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Renee. And um, basically, we got picked up, and he offered me the same money I was getting on a TV network mm -hmm. to be on the web. Mm -hmm. And he basically explained that, you know, Google bought 150 channels, right? And a lot of people had these channels, you know, from Nicole Richie down to like, for instance, Bravo or CNN. They had their mm -hmm. own channels, and we were the first one to launch mm -hmm. on the Loud channel. Right. And people were like, yo, you're on the internet, you're on YouTube. I'm like, but people don't understand. I've been on reality shows. I've been on the Kardashians. I've been on things. We have a full-fledged camera crew. It's legit. It's just we are obviously producing these shows. Instead of doing 21-minute episodes with 9-minute commercials, we're doing 6 to 10-minute episodes with obviously a little skip this ad now for like, right, little right. you know, second one-minute commercial. Kia. Right. And where can people see the reality show? So every Wednesday, in fact, we just dropped the episode with today. A second episode came out this morning at uh, 10 a.m. with the Q on a world star. And every Wednesday at 10 a.m., we drop a new episode. I saw you had one with Pusha T, right? Yeah. Pusha T was last week. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, he's probably mad at me. But because the response was so crazy, I had to make my own set of keys. I saw know? that. I was looking at your keys see? just those now. I was like, are those keys? I see. What's the name? What's the name? Has a, a those don't actually key. open anything, do they? Well, um, I hope they don't because one is Pusha T's mom's house key. One is his, <laughs> his house key, and the other one's a safe key. Now, you know, the crazy thing so you is... get into a safe. I actually went to school in Virginia, so I know exactly where Pusha T's mom lives, so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's disrespectful. I'm just joking. Pusha's the you know, I want to ask you one thing before you leave. How did y'all let Jay-Z go to Def Jam? For um, priority. 
You know, now I can talk about it because I think we had all these weird confidentiality agreements before. In fact, the one with Aftermath was seven years, and this was seven. So basically, he had got into it with, and this is how serious, this is how stupid it was, if you guys want to hear this story. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, the head of business affairs, and uh, the head of business affairs basically was over at, you know, and, and he got into it with with, uh, with Biggs and Jay, and uh, they wanted to move to L.A. They wanted to kind of kind of plant a seed out here, and they were renting the crib, you know, Back then, you remember this is like '96. They wanted to rent a crib, and it was like I think 25, 50 G's a month, which is a big gap, I know. And uh, they wanted a, an S class, a Benz. It wasn't nothing crazy if you mm-hmm. really think about what could have happened. Right. And that was just the start of it. And they felt like you know, you know, like ah, you know, right now masterpiece killing it. You know, I don't know. This you're big. Don't get me wrong. You know what I'm saying? But you know, whatever. And. um they just were just tired of, of you know, probably not showing enough love. And mm-hmm. I, I understand because now me being an artist on, on, on a network or whatever and dealing with things, they just they felt disrespected and they couldn't have come to agreements with something else. Plus, he didn't want to be on Freeze anymore. Do you know what I mean? So they want to do a certain thing. So, so priority let Jay-Z go cause he, for a Benz. Over, pretty much over like a Benz, Benz yeah, and, and, and rent a 50 G's a month for a mansion. And, and it was just something small. And then 50 um, G's a month back then, no yikes. Yeah, yeah but I mean, lot. if you think about the, But they, they didn't know what was going to happen. I mean, they you didn't know, know what was going to happen. Remember at the time, it wasn't multi- Reasonable doubt was critically acclaimed. So he was doing at a that thing time, with my man. It was only 300,000 at that time. Yeah, my man Fade was over at, um, I forgot, it's a small label, but it was, under, uh, it was distributed through Warner Brothers. They did the Sprung soundtrack, and then he did Who You With. And he started doing that, and it was it was it was a rap. And then, um, he just basically, I always, thank God I kept it cool with hip hop, with Biggs and, and, and with Dame. Me and Dame were really close. Jay, I, I just, not that I bumped heads, he was just, he was he was pretty quiet back then even, you know, he's real, he was real shy. And um, he left. So what happened was when, when Hard Knock Life came out, no, was it Hard Knock Life? I forgot. In my lifetime, I'm on one. Yeah. Hard Knock Life came out. It was number one. Yeah, it was number one. Yeah. He was, he was sending Billboard number one, you know, things, like literally sending faxes to, I hate to put you on blast, Andrew, but you my man. Andrew Shack was the vice president, head of business affairs. He's just sending him and the president, Brian Turner, sending them facts like, like yeah, we number up. one, we number one, number one. And just the crazy part is it kept getting bigger, bigger and mm-hmm. bigger. And then when um, I left Aftermath, they started doing the Hard Knock Life tour and all that other stuff and everything. And I jumped on. I was one of the, and I had my Rockefeller chain. Dame gave me a chain. I had you know the Letterman jacket. And I remember seeing them. They're like, yo, how could you go and backstab us? I'm like. Backstabbed you when I went to Aftermath. You know what I mean? It's, I'm not even the music <laughs> business. I'm a DJ. I'm mm-hmm. just running with them. I'm rolling. And yeah, so he was just like, he never looked back, you know? But the thing is, the good thing is with Priority, they obviously own all Reasonable Doubt still. Right. Which to me is my favorite album, you know? But, mm-hmm. you know, everyone has their own opinion. Right. But mm-hmm. that's it. But um, I had to plug the channel. I'm sorry, man. Yeah, go right ahead. Loud. But yeah, it's, it's youtube.com forward slash loud if you want to see the episodes every Wednesday, 10 a.m. Mm-hmm. And Damn we appreciate it. Damn Definitely baller. appreciate you stopping through, man. No, I appreciate and, uh, it. Good story. We want our Rolexes for each one of us. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <He's> like, <laughs> you can charge Angela Yee's credit card. That sounds good. Yeah, do that. I know, <laughs> I know you're rich. <laughs> <laughs> the Breakfast Club of Power 105.1 Ben Baller.